Thank you, Brother Andre. Now, welcome, Brother Raju, for the third question. Thank you, dear brother. Uh, dear brother, uh, I thank my Heavenly Father, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity to be part of this uh, symposium and uh, being uh, one of the panelists to discuss upon relationships uh, between uh, Christian suffering, thanksgiving, praise, uh, and reverence. And the question that is given to me is uh, how can we praise the Lord and how can our present experiences lead us to praise God? Dear brethren, uh, in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 13, verse 15, it says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, uh, giving thanks to his name. This verse says that we need to offer a sacrifice of praise to God. What does it mean? It further continues to tell that that is the fruit of our lips, uh, giving thanks to his name. Now, how can we offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to our Lord? Does it really take a sacrifice to say thanks to God? No, it's very easy to just thank the Lord from uh, our mouth. But when everything is difficult, when everything goes against us, it is very difficult to say thanks to God. When everything is against us, when nothing works as per our expectation, it is really difficult to say thank you Lord. At that moment it takes a great leap of faith to overcome our fleshly feelings and thank the Lord. To do that we need to sacrifice our preference and sacrifice means something that cost us. In these moments dear brethren it takes a lot of sacrifice to thank the Lord. Hence, the Lord is pleased with such sacrifices of thanksgiving. Example of Job. Job was the richest of all the people in the East. In one day, he lost all his wealth. All his children died in calamity. He was full of sores, boils, from foot to his crown and he took a posture to scrap himself with all and he sat down among the ashes. Job 2nd chapter 7 and 8. At this moment, everyone would expect that at least their better half, their wife would come and comfort him. But we read that his wife said unto him, Do thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But Job rebuked his wife. But in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. This was the sacrifice of thanksgiving that Job gave to the Lord. Because at this moment of life, everyone expects comfort words and they try to express their anger. But with Job, it was different. He never blamed God. To do so, Job had to overcome himself. And to overcome himself, he had to sacrifice his self to the Lord and overcome and thank the Lord for such experiences. Hence, this was a sacrifice of praise to God. The fruit of his lips, giving thanks to his name. Similarly, quietly bearing brings praise to God. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15 says, In returning and rest shall you be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. Dear brethren, we again read of Apostle Paul. 
and Silas, how they sang songs while they were in prison. That is recorded to us uh, in a book of Acts uh, 16, chapter verse 25 to 33. And at midnight, Paul and Silas uh, prayed and sang praises unto God. The prisoners heard them and uh, suddenly there was a great earthquake. So the foundation of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's uh, bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, uh, seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword and would have killed himself, uh, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he came trembling and fell before Paul and Silas. And I brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, washed their strips, and was baptized, he and all his straightway. You see, how their singing praises to God changed the situation. First, they did the work of seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And rest all, God took care of it and set them free. Not only that, dear brethren, but by the righteous behavior of Paul and Silas, the entire family of a prison keeper heard the truth and symbolized the consecration. And next morning, God's grace was such that both of them were set free. Verse 34 to 36. This experience of Paul brought praise to God. Similarly, dear brethren, letting go of our freedom for the sake of others' lives, bring praises to the Lord. And surely the Lord will overrule for good. As mentioned in Romans 8.28, For we all know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Dear brethren, we also see how Apostle Paul suffered many things, the details of which are mentioned in 2 Corinthians 11 chapter 24 to verse 30. Of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and day I have been in the deep, in the journeying often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen. In perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in the perils among the false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things which are without that which come upon me daily is the care of all the churches. Who is weak? I am not weak. Who is offended? I am not. For I must need glory. I will glory in the things that concern my infirmities. Dear brethren, in all these experiences, he rejoiced to partake of the cup of the Lord, which brought forth praises to God. And hence the Lord used him as a chosen vessel and revealed many truths. Similarly, the severe trials are some tools the Lord uses to mold us and submit to these chiseling experiences and thanking the Lord for them would definitely bring praise to the Lord. Dear brethren, again in 2 Peter chapter 19 to verse 25, it says, For this is thankworthy if a man for a Conscience uh, sake towards God endures grief, suffering wrongfully 
For what glory is it when you are buffeted of your faults, you shall take it patiently. But uh, if when you do well and suffer for it or take it patiently, that is acceptable to God. For uh, even here unto you are called because Christ also suffered for us, uh, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Uh, who did no sin, nor was guile fine in his mouth, uh, who, when he was revealed, revealed not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, uh, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Jesus had a lot of opportunities uh, where he could have complained to God about the environment, the food, the weather, the people, his family, and also about his disciples. But Jesus never complained anything. He suffered wrongfully, submitted everything and committed everything to God, who judges righteously. Jesus also said, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and praise God who is in heaven. So how do we let our shadows uh, light shine before men? It is only by showing good characters uh, during adverse situation. We read in Hebrews 2nd chapter 10th verse, dear brethren, to make the captain of the salvation perfect through sufferings. <clears throat> Jesus uh, knew this. Hence sometimes Though the troubles seemed to be very heavy, Jesus bore all these things. He even said, Father, not my will, but let time be done. His words and his life brought praises to God. Hence we read in Ephesians 5-2 that his life was a sweet-smelling savor to God. Similarly, sometimes quietly bearing our trials leads to God's glory. Not knowing what to do or how to react. We might be dumb before all and thus made a spectacle, brought to shame before all. We might even keep quiet. Why? For conscience sake. By such behavior, we might get a bad name here on earth. But in the sight of God, remember, it's a sweet smelling aroma. In First Peter 4 chapter, Verses 12 to 16. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials sir, that is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you also might be glad with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as an evildoer, as a busybody in other men's matters. If any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God on his behalf. Dear brethren, during our trials... The testing might be severe, but we should be happy that we are partaking in the sufferings of Christ. This also brings glory to God. Therefore, in 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 11 to 15, we read, For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man builds upon this foundation, Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. Every man's work shall be manifest, for the day shall declare it. Bitter, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide by what he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer a loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so by fire. We need to build our character structure upon the foundation of Jesus, dear brethren. If we need to build it with gold, 
silver, precious stones. It's not so easy. We need to sacrifice as much as gold cost today. But building with hood, stay and abal doesn't cost any sacrifice at all. But whatever we build, dear brethren, it will be, remem remember, it will be tested with fiery trials. And during those moments, if we lose our golden character, if our works burn, then we shall lose our reward. But if you fight a good fight of faith and overcome, we shall receive the reward of divine nature, dear brethren. Hence, we need to be of the little flock that travels on the chariot with the black horses, which brings satisfaction and ultimate glory to God. Dear brethren, the last, in 1 Corinthians, uh, sorry, in 2 Corinthians uh, 4 chapter verses 8 to 11, it says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying marks of our Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh, so that death worketh in us. Dear brethren, these are the marks that show that we are dying daily. Bearing in our bodies the death of Jesus Christ. This type of situation brings glory to God. So let us remember the examples of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They had the opportunity to bow to the idols or eat unclean animals, but they never did it. But for the law's sake, they were ready to die and bear everything. So this is one of the ways that we can bring praise to our Lord. Our present experiences actually lead us to praise the Lord. Seeing the current situation in the world, there's a lot of financial, social, political, religious crisis. A lot of trials are there where it is very difficult to sometimes, dear brother, even to find a suitable job. Very difficult sometimes to earn our daily bread. Sometimes very difficult to maintain our family. In all this, we need to bear these things, dear brethren, as this brings glory to God. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. That is his precious promise. He that toucheth you, toucheth the apple of his eye. Thank you, dear brethren. May the Lord add his blessings to his holy words. Welcome, Dr. Raju. Uh, thank you, uh, dear brethren. Uh, how do God's providence, past uh, and present, uh, lead to greater reverence uh, in our individual relationship uh, with the Father and our God? Dear brethren, uh, in Matthew 26, uh, 31, it says uh, that I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock uh, shall be scattered abroad. Jesus is the shepherd and was smitten and crucified. The sheep are the apostles and the disciples. Why did God allow this in his divine providence for Jesus to be smitten? The scriptures reply that the sheep may be scattered. The scattering of the sheep initially would look very bad as far as the sheep is concerned. But here is the real twist. Scattering of the sheep, the apostles and the disciples all over the world worked out for their good that the gospel was taken to the ends of the world. They were able to receive the truth of the scriptures. So there are certain situations in which we are unaware and think uh, they are not good. But in the sight of God, it will work uh, out for our good. Certain situations, past, present, 
would actually lead to great reverence for God. Even Apostle Peter rejected the Lord three times out of his weakness of the flesh. But later on, when our Lord understood his helpless, fragile human nature and forgave him and gave him the responsibility to feed the flock, he was the one who spoke to the crowd on the day of Pentecost and preached to the people such that their hearts were pricked and 3,000 people got converted at the very moment on the spot. So based on his past experience, he had learned a lot of things. Similarly, there are good lessons we need to learn from our past experience. Dear brethren, in 2 Corinthians 7 chapter, verses 9 to 11, it says, Now I rejoice, sir. Not that uh, you were made sorry, but that you were sorrowed to repentance. Uh, for you were made sorry after a godly manner uh, that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, this uh, self-same thing that you are sorrowed after a godly sort of what carefulness it brought in you. Yeah, what clearing of yourself. Yeah, what indignation. Yeah, what fear. Yeah, what vehement desire. Yeah, what zeal. Yeah, what revenge. In all things, you approved yourself to be clear in this matter. Godly sorrow will work for our good. We also might turn and come back like Peter and do more good works. So these experiences are necessary to develop Christ likeness and to stay close to the Lord. Dear brethren, why did God move the people of Israel to Egypt in the first case, while later they were supposed to be delivered out of Egypt? This was to get them experience in construction work. You see, they had they never had the experience of construction. They were just shepherds. But in Egypt, they were to made to work hard in construction labor. Pharaoh built two treasure cities through Israelites. Why did God give them such an experience? So that in the future, when they get into the promised land, they may be able to self-depend nation who can build their own land and houses. Therefore, in the Bible, it says... That the eagle flattered her nest. Similarly, God did it for the people of Israel. Even today we see that Israel, based on their past experience, they are a self-relied nation. Dear brethren, at last, the experiences of Abraham and Lot led to such a situation where Lot and Abraham were separated. Lord chose a good land like the Garden of Eden when Abraham was left alone. With desert all around, he was left alone with God. Nobody was with him. That is the time that God promised him. Abraham, you see the land. Part your east, west, north, south. All around you, I will give this to you and your generation forever. It was a very strange thing, dear brethren, that Abraham was left in a desert. But later on, we see that Lot lost everything, even his wife. But Abraham seemed to lose everything, but he gained everything. Dear brethren, these experiences of God's providence in our life, letting the Lord to make our choice, it leads to greater reverence for God. This is not so easy, dear brethren. You see, that would require a lot of sacrifice on our part. Lot of denying on our part. Whether we will be faithful to the Lord or not. Whether we will sacrifice for the Lord or not. If we do, Lord will definitely compensate for it. Hence, what Jesus said in Matthew 16.25. And whosoever will save his life shall lose it. 
and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Dear brethren, thank you. May the Lord add his blessings to his holy words. Thank you.